Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today, we're taking a look at Café Fatal, put out by Zach Zumspielen, and uh, designed by Brett J. Gilbert and Trevor Benjamin. Uh, now, this is a dice rolling game where you are fighting over the different morsels that are on tables. The morsels are made up of uh, cakes and cheese wheels and pizzas, so really nice tasting stuff apparently and uh, you're trying to get the most points at the end of the game each uh, type of morsel has a different value of points attributed to it. If you get sets of five of the same morsel, then your, your points are doubled. So there's a lot of uh, things that are going on there, but generally speaking, you're simply fighting over different things by rolling dice and placing them out on these different tables. Whoever has the most dice on a table gets to take the morsels from that table. It has a real Las Vegas feel to it. I think that uh, uh, you're going to see that right away, but let's get down to the table. I'll show you how it works, then we'll come back with some final thoughts in a few minutes. So here I have set up for you a three-player game of Café Fatale. Now, uh, this is a dice rolling game where you're going to be fighting for these different morsels that are on the table, and those morsels are worth a certain number of points. This is better to show you over here. Uh, each morsel is worth one, two, and five points, determining on what type of morsel it is. If you get five of a kind, it doubles their points. So if you get five cheese, it turns into a complete cheese wheel and it's worth 10 points, and so forth and so on for the pizza and the cake down there at the bottom as well. There is a definite setup for the different number of players, as you can see here, two players, three players, and four to five players. And then you also uh, set randomly one morsel of uh, food on each of the different tables. Then you're gonna roll two dice, and for those two uh, tables, the six and the three, which is right here, they're going to get an extra morsel, just like that, again, randomly chosen uh, from the bag. That is the only thing that these numbers are used for on the tables, uh, is just the random placement of those extra two morsels at the beginning of every round. Now, on your turn, you're gonna take your dice and you're gonna roll them, and then you have to choose all of the dice from one group and put them out onto a table of your choice. Your first placement can go anywhere it needs to go. Uh, for example, I could take my three fives here and put them right here, no problem at all. But on subsequent turns, I have to place adjacent to this table. Uh, and it can also be diagonally adjacent as well. So on my next turn, I can play on any of these tables right here, but uh, my first placement can go anywhere I would like it to go. So on Blue's turn, they're going to roll the dice like so, and they have, okay, two sixes, a five. They're gonna go ahead and place their two sixes right here. And then it is Orange's turn. They're gonna roll their dice, and they have all of these here. They're gonna place their four right there, just like that. Then it comes back around to my turn. I take my three dice and I roll them. So I've got, two ones and a six. Uh, let's see here, we're gonna go with, we'll go here with the six. Now, after all of the dice have been placed by players taking subsequent turns and rolling their dice and choosing a group and to play onto the table, uh, all of the dice have been placed out now. Now that the, now the morsels are distributed. So if you have the most number of dice on a table, you're going to get all of those uh, morsels. In the case where the number of dice is equal, then the higher value will get the morsel. If the values are also tied, then nobody gets the morsel. These are just taken away. But in this spe specific case, uh, Orange is going to be getting this one. Orange got this one as well. Uh, here, Blue got this one because we have the same number of dice, but we have the higher value over there. And over here, same thing, but orange gets it, like that. Over here, green is uncontested, green is uncontested, uncontested as well here. Uh, orange is uncontested here, uh, blue uncontested here. And over here, blue is also uncontested, like so. The board is set back up, two more dice are rolled. So one and two. 
and another round begins. Now, the game has continued to pl be played like this until one person or more people get 40 points or more. At that point, the end of the game happens. Now, there is one other in-game condition, and that is there are not enough morsels to fill the table. If that is also the case, then uh, the game also ends that way. Whoever has the most points is the winner. Uh, and that's very easily and basically how you play Café Fatal. So that is Café Fatal. Um, it is a very simple dice rolling game that has a lot of oomph in it, but not so much oomph that the complexity rises so much out of it. It's still just a simple uh, filler dice rolling game. And uh, that's what I really like about it. Uh, I like rolling dice. There's nothing that uh, I can say against that. Uh, dice hate me more often than not. They don't usually help me win games, but I still enjoy doing that. And so this is one of those games that I enjoy for that reason. Uh, Las, I said in the um, intro that it has a very Las Vegas feel to it. Las Vegas was a, another dice rolling game that uh, was that had the theme of, of, of placing your dice at these different con casinos, and then whoever had the most dice at those casinos were were able to take the money from that. Whoever had the most money wins. Well, this has a very similar uh, distribution mechanism for your dice, basically, where you have to roll uh, your dice and then you get to pick. Uh, which group of dice you place out. Um, now, with Las Vegas, you were restricted to a certain casino. Like, you could go to the 6 casino or the 5 casino if you rolled those dice uh, with those face on it. Here, you uh, not only have the choice of choosing which group of um, uh, 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 values you can put out on the table, but you also can choose where to put them on uh, those different tiles. You're not restricted initially with your first um, with your first placement. After that, though, you do have some restrictions to it in that you have to place adjacent to where you already have dice present. So that's an interesting little twist, and I think it's uh, a little bit better than Las Vegas in that respect because it, it, it feels, at least, like uh, you're not as restricted with uh, where you can place your dice. And I like that. Uh, I like that there's an extra level of thought process that goes on, uh, not just, okay, I've rolled a three, well, I can place that on the three place, or I rolled a four, and I can place that on the four place. Um, now, you kind of self-restrict your, your, your placement after that first placement because, like, for example, if I put threes on a table, I can only put threes on that table. I can't play place threes anywhere else. So there is a little bit of, of self-restriction that's going on there with the decisions that you make. So the later on that you get into the round, the more restrictions you have placed upon yourself. So uh, I, I get that, but I, I kind of like this one a little bit better just for that. So that's my first pro. I like this, uh, the way that this uh, distribution mechanism was worked better than a very similar one in Las Vegas. Now, on top of that, uh, another pro for me is the theme. I think that the theme in this one is much more palatable than the one in Las Vegas. Las Vegas has that um, that stigma attached to it of, you know, Sin City and all that kind of stuff. So whenever you play a game that has that, it's going to carry with it all that baggage. This game doesn't have that baggage. And that's what I like about it. Um, I also like the fact that it is it goes down to eight-year-olds and up. And even there is some wiggle room uh, with that age aid because I, I had my son play this one and uh, he's seven, and he was able to pick up the rules really quickly. He was able to grok everything and be competitive uh, throughout the course of the game, and he did really well at it. Uh, I think he came in second place when he played it, so uh, there is that as well. There is a wide range of availability in the number of uh, the age of the players that can uh, take part in this and do well and have fun and not just be told what to do. So that's a cool thing as well. Um, with gamers, I don't know. Some some may be uh, drawn to this theme more than a Las Vegas theme and vice versa. So uh, I don't think that uh, it would be warranted for you to own both of them because how the game plays and how the game feels is very, very similar between this one and Las Vegas. So if you 
already have Las Vegas and you enjoy it, and it is your kind of go-to dice roller filler game, then maybe you don't want this, but at the same time, maybe you already own Las Vegas and you want a more family-esque theme that gives you the same feel as Las Vegas does, well, then maybe you do want to own this one and Las Vegas at the same time. I don't know. That's really a decision that you have to make. But uh, I think that the... Uh, the artwork is also very good. That's another pro. Um, now, the artwork doesn't really... It's mainly on the box cover. Uh, but the artwork of the pieces, the morsels, and all that kind of stuff, it's uh, very good as well. Uh, it reminds me of um, Jeffrey Aller's game, A Piece of Cake, uh, from way back when. But, the, of course, the pieces, the morsels, are a little bit smaller. Uh, the table tiles that you use in the game... Um, uh, they, they really just look like red and white tiles. There's a little bit of, uh, there's a few Easter egg type artistic elements to the tiles, but for the most part, it's just red and white tables. Uh, so that's that. The component quality, the dice have rounded edges. I like that better than, than sharp corners on dice. Um, the... I don't think that any of the, the components were too small, uh, which sometimes these smaller games can run into that problem, for me at least. Uh, so that's a cool thing. Um, other other than that, I don't, I don't really have anything bad to say about it, I, uh, except for I don't think it plays as well with three players as it does with uh, two and maybe four and five. Because with four and five, there's a little bit more. Everybody's kind of going after each other. With a three-player game... Um, it just feels like if, if two people get battling too much, you give the game away to the other person uh, that's playing the game. And I don't really like it when games do that. Uh, with two players, it's you're fighting against each other. And I think it balances out pretty well there. So I think uh, with three players, it's probably not the best game. That might be its one downfall for me. It doesn't play really well with three. But uh, with all the other player counts, I think it's great, spot on. Uh, so that's it for me for Cafe Fatale. All in all, I think I'm going to give this uh, two thumbs up. It's a it's a great game. I think it will work very well with families. Uh, probably um, not as big of a hit with gamers uh, in a gamer gamer type format, but uh, I think it still works well in that format with a uh, as a filler role game. Uh, I think this could be a headliner uh, with uh, kids game groups or with families. Uh, this is a great game. It doesn't take very long at all. The box says 30 minutes. That's probably pretty correct with exactly how long it's going to take, no matter how many um, uh, players you have. So, all in all, I think it's a great game. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. It's uh, I, I really enjoyed it. This is one of the games that I was looking for uh, at Essen, and it did not disappoint. I like it a lot. I love dice rolling games, and this fits right into that niche. So that's it for me for Cafe Fatale. We'll see you guys on the flip side. 